Hey, Rob here for Quadratech. Today we've got our giveaway Jeep back in the shop for three more upgrades. Today we're going to be installing a Mopar fuel door, Mopar auxiliary switch kit, and a Z Automotive taser. Now, if you haven't already gotten yourself entered at a chance to win our giveaway Jeep, you don't want to miss out. You can click the info button or the link down in the description below to head over to Quadratech.com. If you make a purchase up to once per week, you'll be automatically entered at a chance to win, or you can manually fill out that entry form up to once per week from now until September 15th when the entry period closes. Now today we're gonna to be installing that Mopar fuel door to change up the outside appearance of our Jeep just slightly. And then we've got that Mopar auxiliary switch kit lined up to set us up for some additional accessories in some coming videos. This auxiliary switch kit is great because it integrates right into the dash without any modification, gives us that great factory look four auxiliary switches there that we can access and change how they function right through our Jeep's touchscreen. Now, normally by installing that Mopar auxiliary switch kit, it would require you to pay a trip to the dealership for them to activate that functionality, but that's just not the case. If you install the Z Automotive Taser, you can do that right at home from your garage or driveway. The Taser will unlock the ability for you to dive in and activate those factory options like the auxiliary switches, as well as a bunch of other really cool stuff. So why don't we go ahead and dive in today? We gotta get that tail light out of the way so we can access the backside of the factory fuel filler housing. With a couple tabs to depress, we can simply pop that right out of the way so that we're ready to install that new fuel door. At this point, we're ready to go ahead and install our new Mopar billet aluminum fuel door into our Jeep. You can see it features the same great ABS style housing as that factory fuel filler does. We've got a brand new rubber grommet on the backside that's gonna seal nice and tight around the fuel filler neck there. And then on the front, we've got this great billet aluminum housing with the Jeep logo right in the center there. And on the inside, we've got a great Willys silhouette there as well. A nice little Jeep Easter egg for us. Now to get this installed, it's simply gonna push right into place. We've got a notch on the top here that's gonna align with this notch in the body of the Jeep. You can push that grommet right over the fuel filler neck, align that notch in the top, and push it in until you hear it click. Last thing we need to do, is go ahead and grab our fuel cap and pop that tether right into the hole on the inside there. Reinstall the cap. And we can move on to our auxiliary switch kit. The first thing we need to do is go ahead and remove the two 10 millimeter bolts holding the coolant reservoir against the firewall, as well as one additional bolt holding the wire harness bracket. Once we have those out of the way, we can install the relay distribution housing bracket into place on our firewall, securing it with one existing bolt and one provided new bolt. With that bracket installed, we can now go ahead and clip that relay distribution block in place, slipping the wiring behind our coolant reservoir and resecuring that with those two bolts we had just removed. Go ahead and continue running that harness across the firewall following the factory wiring, securing it right here with three zip ties at the location of those four fuses. Now, I really like how Mopar has put this auxiliary switch kit together. They made it a really easy install for you. Under hood here, we really only have three legs of the harness. Once we have that run across the firewall here to the passenger side, the shortest leg is gonna have two positive connections along with an inline fuse here that we can route right along this factory wiring. You wanna slip down that protective cover over the positive connection on your battery. And then using a 10 millimeter socket, we can make that connection right here on the connection closest to the firewall. All right, with that positive connection made, we've got our next leg of the harness, which is our medium length leg here. This is gonna run just behind the power distribution center, your fuse box under the hood here, routing it down alongside of your fender. Now, one of the connections we have to make is our grounding terminal here. This is gonna be the very last connection that we make during the install. It's always best to save that ground for very last so that there's no power running through this system while we're installing it. The other portion of this leg here has our four auxiliary outputs. Now this is really great because it's gonna give you a very easy and quick way 
to add additional accessories on the exterior of your vehicle here. So we've got four legs of this harness, one, two, three, and four, all clearly labeled for you. And each of them are capable of supplying slightly different outputs. So we can look at the fuse holders right here along the firewall and see that auxiliary one and auxiliary three are capable of supplying 40 amps of output, while auxiliary two and auxiliary four are capable of being a 15 amp circuit. So that's gonna be really easy for you to add different accessories like maybe an underhood air compressor or some auxiliary lighting here on the front bumper or maybe the cowl or even something like a light bar up on top of the Jeep. And these are gonna remain right here on the side of the battery under the hood. Now the third leg of our harness, the longest leg here, this leg is gonna get run down and through our firewall to the interior of the Jeep. Of course, one portion of this is gonna plug into the backside of those auxiliary switches mounted on the dash. We have a couple other small connections to make in the passenger side kick panel. And then again, we'll see four more labeled outputs, auxiliary one, two, three, and four. These are gonna remain again in that passenger kick panel on the inside of your vehicle. Now Mopar has designed this kit so that you can choose to either use the exterior under hood outputs or the interior in the kick panel outputs. You don't wanna use, say, auxiliary one under the hood and on the inside at the same time. You can choose one or the other, but this is great because it gives you the flexibility of adding some additional accessories like maybe a ham radio or a CB radio on the inside of your Jeep that you wanna power with those auxiliary switches. So at this point, we can go ahead and route this third leg of the harness down here behind our fuse box. We're gonna route it through an existing grommet in the firewall. Moving inside of the Jeep, we'll need to remove the glove box as well as the passenger lower kick panel. Using a fish tape or coat hanger, poke through the existing grommet in the firewall and pull that leg of the harness through the firewall into the passenger footwell area. Now here you will be making one connection into a factory existing connector. You can follow the supplied instructions to make sure that you're removing the correct wire. You will need some pin tools to help get that wiring out of that factory connector. We'll be replacing that with the orange wire in the new auxiliary switch wiring harness. Once you have that snapped into place, the orange wire that we just removed from that factory connector will be pinned into one of the supplied connectors along with the additional orange wire also in that auxiliary switch harness. Once we have those connectors assembled, we can connect them together and then continue fishing our wiring through the dash. We'll need to go ahead and remove the climate control panel as well as the center lower dash panel so that we can get access behind there. Pull the auxiliary switch wiring up through the center of the dash and insert the bare pinned wires into that supplied auxiliary switch connector. You can follow the instructions that are provided to make sure that you're inserting those wires into the correct location. And then we need to go ahead and remove the cubby from that center lower dash panel. Flip it over and remove the five and a half millimeter screws holding it in place and replace it with the provided smaller storage pocket along with the auxiliary switch panel. Those secure back in place with those same screws that you just removed. At this point, we can go ahead and make the connection on the backside of our auxiliary switch panel with that wiring we just completed, as well as connecting all of our other existing wiring, and we can go ahead and reassemble that center dash portion. Now we can move on to installing our taser into the Jeep. Now this is done by simply plugging it in just above the OBD2 port. The taser will replace the secure gateway module that's already in place here in your Jeep. Simply unplug the two connectors in that secure gateway module, pull them down under the dash and plug them into the backside of the taser in the matching locations. Moving back under the hood, we can attach that ground ring to the existing ground post found on the inside of the fender, just to the side of the battery for our auxiliary switch harness. And finally, reconnect our negative leads to the battery. Now at this point, we're ready to go ahead and set up our taser as well as activate the auxiliary switches in our Jeep. So the first thing we need to do is to go ahead and put the ignition into the run position by pressing it twice, making sure that your foot is off the brake. We don't wanna start the vehicle, just wanna put it into the run position. Now, once everything goes through its normal startup procedure, I wanna show you where in the radio, we're gonna find the controls for our auxiliary switches. Once we go through here, 
we would normally go into the settings menu and here we see things like language, display, units of voice. This is where we're gonna find the controls for the auxiliary switches once we activate them with the taser. Now again, this is saving you a trip to the dealer. Normally after you would complete this install, you would have to visit your local Jeep dealership to get them to activate the functionality for the auxiliary switches. You don't have to do that with the taser. You can do it all right at home as well as plenty more. So the first thing we need to do is to use the left navigation here on our steering wheel to toggle down to the audio page in our cluster. Now, once we're on the audio page, holding the left arrow and using the cancel button on the cruise control side of the steering wheel, we can navigate through the taser menu. You'll see here we have kind of a secret menu that has now appeared. And as we toggle through, we can see things like read diagnostic trouble codes, clear diagnostic trouble codes, before we do anything with the taser, we need to marry it to the vehicle. That's pairing it up with the vehicle's computer. So we're gonna hold the left arrow and hit the cruise control button right in the center on the marry page. And now we'll see that the taser is gonna go through a quick procedure to marry itself to the vehicle. It takes about 20 seconds to go through. You may see some systems in the Jeep start and stop, maybe reset while it's completing that procedure. Now once our taser is paired to your Wrangler or your Gladiator, you can then navigate through the different menus and activate and change a lot of different features and functions of your vehicle. So our marrying procedure is completed here. Now again, holding that left arrow and the cancel button is gonna allow us to toggle through the taser menu. We can see we have like performance modifications we can make, TPMS changes, radio, lighting, off-road, other is the menu we want for this. Now on the other menu displayed in the EVIC here, we can go ahead and hit the cruise control button. It's gonna take us into that menu. We'll see auxiliary is set to no. Now, first thing we can do here is go ahead and hit the left arrow. And again, that center cruise control, that center cruise control button acts as our okay button or to toggle between on and off or yes and no. We hit that, now we see we're gonna have auxiliary set to yes here in our gauge cluster. And now we can continue to toggle through that menu by holding that left arrow again and the cancel button. We'll see different other factory features like blind spot monitoring, belting, part sense. We have a lot of different functions in here that the taser has access to. We wanna to continue to go all the way through this menu until we reach the full reboot. Now once we see full reboot displayed, go ahead and hit the cruise control button to activate that. Now this is gonna go through about a two minute restart procedure where it's actually running through the vehicles, computers that are on board, controlling all the different features of your Jeep, resetting them with the new parameters that you've defined with the taser. Now while it's going through these steps, you're going to see things like your gauges, reboot, restart, cycle, your radio is gonna to toggle on, toggle off, reset. It's going through all of the different computers and modules in the vehicle to get them all synced up to the preferences you've now set. Now, once that full reboot procedure has finished out, it's gonna take you back to the standard display on your gauge cluster. And now if we take a look at our radio, we see right here in the settings menu, it actually stayed in that menu for us. We now have auxiliary switches as an option on our settings menu. So if we click that, we'll see this is where we have control over those four auxiliary switches. Each one of those is going to allow us the capability of changing it from a latching or a momentary style switch. So a latching switch is one that you're gonna push, it's gonna remain on until you turn it off, or a momentary, think of it like a horn style switch where you can simply activate whatever function you want while holding that button. We can also change whether that switch is battery controlled or ignition controlled. So if you have maybe a backup light that you wanna be able to turn on even when the ignition is off, you can change one of those auxiliary buttons to the battery setting. On the ignition setting, we also have that recall last state setting there that we can activate. And that's gonna remember what position you had that switch in when you turned your vehicle off. So if maybe you have a set of lights that you had turned on, or maybe it's a CB radio that you have turned on when the vehicle is running, 
When you turn your Jeep off, it's gonna turn off power to that, but when you start the Jeep back up, if you have that recall last state option checked, it's gonna go ahead and turn power back on to that accessory without you having to physically push the button. Of course, we have all these same different controls for auxiliary one through four, and at this point, we can go ahead and check each of those buttons. They should light up when we touch them confirming that we've completed the install of that Mopar auxiliary switch kit. Now, in addition to activating some factory features, our Z Automotive Taser has a lot of other functionality for us as well. So if we go ahead and go back into our audio menu here, well, we can run through and recalibrate things like our tire size, which is gonna be a big help since we've installed those much larger Milestar Patagonia MTs just a little while back. So I'm gonna go ahead and toggle through our menu here, go through performance. We can check out what we've got in the performance menu here. We've got tire size set to 31.94, which is not any longer the tire size on this Wrangler. So holding that left toggle button again, now using our set plus on the cruise control, we can go ahead and raise our tire size up to the 37 inch tire diameter of our Milestar tire. So we'll go ahead and toggle through this system here until we reach 37 for our tire size. There we go. And hit that center cruise control button to set the tire size. You'll see a confirmation message there that your tire size has been set. Now we can hit the cancel button again to go through and we'll see some of the other modifications we have access to here are things like our gear ratio currently set to 3.45. Well, this again is gonna come in handy in an upcoming video because we're going to be changing out our gear ratio along with adding some things like new axle shafts and lockers to our giveaway build here to make this much more capable when we take it back out on the trail so that the new owner of this Jeep can pretty much go wherever they want. Now, of course, the last thing to go here in our Taser menu was again, as I mentioned, anytime you make any updates or any changes, you've got to toggle through the menu until you get to that full reboot. Go ahead and activate the full reboot again so that we can save that new tire size that we just set in the vehicle's computer so it will remain there. And we'll probably go back in and change things like our TPMS thresholds as well because we can bring those down lower from that factory setting. We're probably gonna be running a lot lower tire pressure in these and we wanna keep that tire pressure monitor system threshold lower as well so that we're not getting false TPMS lights on the dash. Now, if you guys have any comments or questions about any of the products that I installed in today's video, you can always leave this for me down in the comment section below or contact us directly at any of the options on the screen. Of course, if you haven't already gotten yourself entered at a chance to win our 2022 Jeep Wrangler JL, you're not gonna wanna miss out on that. Make sure you head over to quadratech.com. You can click the link in the description below or at by clicking that info button. Make a purchase on the site up to once per week to get automatically entered to win, or you can manually fill out that entry form. You've got some time left before the entry period closes, so don't miss out on your chance to potentially bring this Jeep home and call it your very own. Now again, if you guys haven't already and you like these videos, do me a huge favor, go ahead and hit that thumbs up button. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button as well as the notification icon, so you'll be sure to catch all of our latest videos as well as the rest of our exciting buildup of our 2022 Jeep Wrangler JL giveaway build. Until next time, I'm Rob. I'll see you guys out on the trail.